might entitle this video something like how to tell if your Gung Fu Sifu is so homophobic that it is extremely unhealthy. Now obviously, you know, being homophobic at all is not healthy, but there can be this extreme unhealthiness and you can recognize the extent of that extremity in the same kind of way that you might recognize when somebody has an extreme addiction. For instance, if that homophobic behavior is starting to seriously affect somebody's social life, professional life, family life, that should be an indicator that there's a problem. So, in order to potentially help Gung Fu Sifus around the world who might have such extreme homophobia, I'm going to lay out, you know, a few different indicators that I've seen in my, in my experience, a few different indicators of extreme homophobia that a student might recognize that they can somehow bring this to their Sifu's attention. I don't know how because usually if somebody's in that position and they're a Sifu and they're, they're that homophobic, they probably got really uh, large ego problems and are not going to take well to anybody trying to uh, bring issue, suggest that they have an issue that they need to deal with. But in any case, um, might as well just lay it out. Well, first of all, I guess I should say, obviously, this is a uh, response to the video that was posted, I believe, just yesterday by Sifu Freddie Lee on his new Vimeo channel, um, where he is using ex explicit philosia to attempt to rationalize, justify his homophobia. Why is he doing this is because it's causing him big problems. Why is he on Vimeo? It's because his his homophobia has caused him big problems. His homophobia and his, his generalized hatred of all kinds of categories of human beings. Um, any case, how do you know if your Kung Fu Sifu has such an extreme homophobia that it is becoming a problem. One of the ways you can tell is if he's constantly bringing up homosexuality or homosexuals, if this kind of thing is constantly on his mind to the extent that he's often bringing it up publicly and speaking about it, especially in a negative light, but in general, just to be focused on it for no given reason, um, suggests that he might have a problem, but especially so when he's putting it out there broadly public. I mean, these are not, I'm not talking about private conversations, although if someone's constantly bringing up homosexuals and homosexuality in private conversations, probably an issue there too. But um, if they're doing it in a kind of a negative uh, manner, trying to basically recruit you into their um, antipathy toward homosexuals, that's where you start getting your clues. And some of the ways that an extremely problem, extremely uh, disturbed person might do this is to broadcast it widely, publicly. Like, say, for instance, to make dozens of YouTube videos 
where he's pointing to um, behaviors that he sees homosexual homosexuality in. Um, now, given those perceptions might not be accurate, but he sees something in the behavior of someone else, and in order to put them down, um, he says, that's gay, that's homosexual, that's disgusting. If he's doing that, big flashing red lights, this guy's got a problem. Why is he out there on the public scene um, putting people down using homosexuality as his put down? Um, if this guy's not homophobic, why would he ever do that? I mean, that's a really obvious glaring homophobia right there. <laughs> Okay, if he sees, now this is a related issue, if he sees homosexuality and homosexual expression in forms of expression that are have nothing to do with sexuality, or with being gay, that's another indicator, because he's starting to project his homophobia all over the, on the world, right? So, if he's looking at jujitsu or wrestling or whatever, and he sees just because guys are in, you know, intimate quarters with each other to engage in that kind of um, combat or combat training, and he says, oh, that looks like gay sex, that's his projection onto something that has nothing to do with gay sex. And that's an indicator that he's got a problem, that he's over-the-top homophobic. Another huge indicator is if he plays with dolls and positions them in homoerotic, you know, positions and videotapes it and puts it on the internet as a big joke. You know, if he takes his big, you know, these are life-size dolls, these bob dummies, and he lays them down like they're sucking each other's dick, this kind of thing, kissing each other, and he, he puts, the, you know, he puts like some funky music to it, and he just, his videos just comprised of different bobs involved in these homosexual activities. And then, he, and then he puts a title on it, like, this is not martial arts or something. That's, that's like creepy homophobic. That's getting into, um, like, Silence of the Lambs creepiness. There's something really wrong with the person that goes, you know, that far, that he's going to take time out of his day uh, to play with life-size dolls and position them in homoerotic, you know, Positions and videotape it and put it on internet and have it, you know, listed as comedy because to him he thinks that's funny. Um, it's not funny, it's creepy. You're a weirdo. <laughs> a person like that, the, the Kung Fu Sifu that's like gone that far, yeah, that's extreme over the top, alright? Um, and so, it's not surprising that if a Kung Fu Sifu has, has done all of this stuff, then, then he would be experiencing some problems in his social life and professional life and personal life. Um, he's got issues. And it's very hard for people to bring these issues up to him because he's very defensive. He, he doesn't want to concede that he has any issues. Um, he might try to rationalize it and say, well, look at all these other guys. You got these fundamentalist church groups. They're outright calling uh, gay people sinners and abominations and these kind of things. And they're totally against gay marriage and all that. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. All I'm doing is using homosexual, homosexual, um, my, pro my projections 
of homosexual behavior as a joke to make fun of people. That's all I'm doing. So why, why am I getting all this flack and these fundamental uh, church groups are not getting nearly as much um, you know, pressure put on them? Well, the, you know, the reason maybe they're not getting as much pressure put on them is because everybody recognizes these are fundamentally disturbed people. They got problems. That's the only, you know, they, first of all, they, they have a, a, a make-believe man in the clouds who controls the world, you know. They got issues to begin with, but a Gung Fu Sifu might be claiming that he represents and embodies good physical health, good mental health, good spiritual health, that he is, you know, enlightened, that he um, is close with the Tao and Buddhism, that he's a Zen practitioner. He might be claiming all these things, and so the people that are, that are looking at him, they want to look up to him. They want him to embody all those things that he's claiming to embody. And then here he is publicly shouting out that although I embody all those things, I hate these people and 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 they're all disgusting and gay and fat. You know, somebody that goes out in the city where he lives and candidly videotapes obese people to put those images on the internet so that people can laugh at obese people. This is not a man of the Tao and Buddhism and Zen. This is a person who has who is psychologically disturbed. There is no mental health represented there in that kind of comedy. That's no that's not even it's not funny, it's creepy. That's not mentally healthy or spiritually healthy. A guy can be as physically healthy as he as he wants to be, but when he's using that physical health and turning around and putting other people down because they're not as physically healthy as him, that shows that he's got problems. So these are the indicators. Look out for them. Um, I can only tell you what they look like. I really can't tell you what to do about it because I have completely failed to gradually introduce and try to make uh, my own Gung Fu Sifu who was, who was um, so extremely disturbed. I failed. My approach was to gradually introduce um, some of these things that he was projecting his homophobia on because it's important to learn grappling but I thought in the gradual approach in, in, in being me and being his friend and all that I thought that he would be able to um, maybe uh, confront it himself a little bit but that wasn't the case so I don't know how to help somebody in that situation but I do know how to identify um, somebody that's spiraling down in that manner. So hopefully somebody else out there will come up with an idea of how to actually help somebody in that situation.